Welcome back everybody. We are at the Lee Bear booth at IMTS. I'm here with my buddy Scott Yoders. If you haven't seen the intro booth video to the whole team, you gotta go check that out. They've got an extremely talented team here. But Scott, we're standing in front of a machine. We've got multiple stations running inside the same machine center. Let's let's start digging into that. Tell me yeah, about that's it. that's right, Arthur. This is our gear skiving machine from okay. Lee Bear. And you know, everybody's showing skiving nowadays and some people call it different things, but uh, I want to tell everyone that, you know, like all gear cutting processes where they're generating, means the tool is rotating together with the work, yeah. synchronized, they're not new. So all these processes that we make, hobbing, shaping, skiving, uh, you can get all those machines from Lee Para. those were invented a long time ago. I think hobbing was 1835 by an English guy. <laughs> Uh, 1896, the shaping process was invented by an American. And then this process, skiving, was invented in 1908 by a German company. And for sure, uh, it never was really, let's say, ready for prime time. Skiving's a little bit different than hobbing or shaping, yeah. the other generating processes to make teeth, because it's not as forgiving. So with the hobbing process and the shaping process, you always have a positive rake angle into the work. Okay. You can change cutting speeds, you can change feed rates, it works. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, let's say that's what mostly people were making gears with. And in the year 2010, this became a viable process for making gears. And nowadays, if you walk through the East Hall, you'll see everybody who has two spindles showing skiving. And and it's true, one of the reasons why, I mean, we had a machine in the 1970s that did the skiving process. Wait, 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 1970s? That's right, like, as, as I mentioned, this was in 1908 invented. I'm a machinist, I have a background. I didn't hear about skiving until a few years ago. Yeah, you guys have been right. at it for what, over 50 years? Well, I can tell you in 1970s, we and, and our competitors were not successful with it. And, and, okay. and there's a reason for it, why skiving just came to the market, is because you need high rotational speeds and high rigidity. Okay. And, and for sure, back in the 70s, when all the generating processes like hobbing, shaping, skiving were linked with a mechanical drivetrain, uh, you know, you just couldn't get the rotational speed and the rigidity or stiffness that you needed. Nowadays, with the modern direct drive tables, they're extremely stiff and high rotational speeds, and we're able to do the process. And, and as I mentioned, the difficulty really is you have that negative rake angle situation. And that also, when, let's say 2007, there was one company that brought it, and you know, we, we had customers in automotive that would say, yeah, it, it's, it's faster than shaping, but you know, we'd get, not so consistent tool life. Maybe we get a hundred parts on one cutter, we change the cutter and you get 10 pieces. Okay. And the reason why, and when Leaper came to market with it, the cutting tool is much more critical than the hobbing or shaping process. As I mentioned, you can change feed rates, you can change cutting speeds on the others, it works. Skiving, the tool should really be designed with the correct, correct crossed axis angle, yep. the correct kappa angle, and also cutting speeds and feed rates in mind. Then you design the tool. So what we do is we simulate the entire process. We manufacture the tools. We at Leap Air not just make machines, we make cutters. So not just the machines. So you guys have it all under the same roof. So you guys already know how to work together. I don't have to worry about getting two different people that have never worked oh. together. And then you get that volatility. That doesn't happen in manufacturing. Everybody loves each other, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but so you've got it all under no, one there's roof. No, there's no third party. That's right. We, yeah. do, we do the full process because we're gear guys. We, we like to know how to do all the processes and give the our customer base the right recommendations for manufacturing to have a good quality, but also a stable running process. You know, and especially me as a manufacturing engineer, appreciate that because you know it, when you have inconsistent tool life and things like that, it's not a stable process. So we attacked it with the complete package, machine tool, cutting tool, and process design. And I said that's with our simulation. In the 70s, we didn't have all the process simulation tools we have nowadays. And, and also the, the tool, it's important to say, because of our knowledge from making cutting tools at Leap Air, it looks like a shaper cutter, but it's yeah. not. The, some of the clearance angles are also different. So that has to be taken into account. And we know we can do that. Okay, if you're a, a machine shop with a two spindle lathe and you want to make a gear once in a while, and, and you don't need hundreds of parts or whatever, maybe it works. But if you want to have a stable running process, we can give you the know-how. Yeah, and the team at Liebherr, you're more here for the, the production side of things, maybe a little bit of R&D, but you're not here for the very low onesie, twosie. Well, that's oh. not entirely true, especially, like I said, we make hobbing machines, we make shaping machines, okay. we make skiving machines. So we look at you know which process is best. We have a lot of job shop customers. Our machines are very easy to change over, fast change over time, and, and, and the software, which I will show you, it's really detailed so that you can input all the data very easily, no custom G&M code programming, anything like that and and really 
You know, we, we serve anybody who makes a gear, one that fits in your hand all the way up to 80 foot diameter gear. Sleep here's got a gear cutting machine for it. Well, that is beautiful. I know in my background, I've been manufacturing 23 years and honestly, everyone out there, gear cutting was something that was beyond me. I didn't have people I could trust. I didn't know Lee Bear when I was still running a machine shop. Otherwise, I probably would have had a conversation with you guys to get the results because I love what I'm hearing from discovering everybody in your team. And it's nice that you have that flexibility. Okay. Yeah, high production, maybe we can go for disguising or, so what's the, what are the criteria? What criteria would you use? Yeah, and, and I think that's the important part because, you know, I, I mentioned they're all generating processes, but yeah. like hobbing is like the worm to worm wheel relationship. Yeah. That's the fastest way to make a gear. Uh, skiving or shaping rather is, is cutting a gear with a gear. It's it's extremely vertical and skiving is something in between. So if you can hob a part, we always say that's the fastest, best way to make a part. Okay. And, and, and yes, skiving is really beneficial, especially for large internal rings where you get a nice cross axis angle. You can make some profile corrections and crowning, which you can't do easily with the shaping process. It's faster than shaping. However, there's parts sometimes you can't get away from from shaping. So, you know, we always say if somebody tells you that skiving can be faster than hobbing, run away screaming, that means they don't sell hobbers, you know? <laughs> and, and, and likewise, there's some cases where we we recommend shaping process, but the skiving is really beneficial for some, like this automotive shaft application where there's not enough space, but it's faster than shaping, also for big rings. So it does have its niche for sure. Well, I, I, I really like the machine running on in the background. You've got your skiving station, you've got your chamfer station as well. Yeah. It's all in one machine. Yeah. That's the other thing I wanted to mention was the chamfering. So we started in 2005 with the chamfer cut process. It's a custom tool to put chamfers on the ends of the teeth, which become more and more important in aerospace, also in e-drive applications, also in, in industrial gearboxes and even truck transmissions. So we started with a chamfering tool a long time ago, and that part process is really running fine. It started with on, on the hob arbor and you shift over. But nowadays we had some customers ask us, especially for these job shops, hey, those cutters are expensive. We don't have the volume. What do you have for job shop flexibility applications or even shaft parts where we can't fit the chamfer cut tool? And so what we came up with on the market is this flex chamfer tool. And the software is also no GM code programming, really easy for the operator to input the chamfer uh, he needs. And also with a standard end mill, you tell it the tool you know, the, the tool diameter, the ball, ball nose radius, and it generates exactly the flat which you're looking for on that chamfer. And so flexibility and easy to change over. So we offer that on our on our machines and yet not a, our competitors are either you know, lathes, machining centers that do skiving, or even some of the custom gear ones are offering such a chamfering solution to customers. Well, that is fantastic, Scott. And I know that about machining, at least I know this much about gears, to know that you're right, you've got to be able to measure it. And I really wanted to talk to someone on your team to understand you've got it all under one roof. We've heard about the machine tools. We've heard about the tooling. We've heard about the options that you offer. But what can we do for metrology? Yeah, if, you, if you can't check them, and you're, you're really not making gears. No. You need to know the accuracy. So yeah. I, I'll, I'll take you over to Ted Clem, and he can give you a detailed description of what we do for our leap hair metrology. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Yeah, no problem, Arthur. So Ted, I was just over with Scott and he was telling me about the machine and the tooling and they're all awesome. They are amazing. However, we both know if you can't measure it, you have not done your job. And I heard you're the metrology wizard. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Ted, I know we did a little bit of an intro video to the whole team, but yes. just really quick summary, what's your role here at Liebherr for those that didn't pay attention to the yeah. other video? So I, I am the uh, product sales manager for Metrology here at uh, Liebherr and Celine. I handle all the machine sales, application questions that come in, I do demos in-house, and I demo the machine here at the show. That is awesome. And I know we're at IMTS. You people are going to be seeing this video after IMTS, but I'm glad that you're here to help support the people that need to measure their gears. So what sets your systems here apart from the competition, right? There's yeah. a reason Lee Bear has been in business 75 years. That, that is correct, yeah. I got to say at the same time, though, that the measuring division is a relatively new product for us. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's about uh, five years that okay. we have this product. We have been constantly improving it. But uh, what the benefit for us is as a company and also as a customer is that we can support now the parts that we cut on our machines, grind on our machines and inspect them here. Like this part, for example, that we see here, Scott showed you on the L LK machine that it was yes. cut over there. Customer brings it over and we measure it here. So 
we have the whole system, we have all the technology, and then now we also, in addition to grinding, hobbing, shaping, skiving, we have the measuring technology in-house. Well, and that's something I really like about the team that you have here at Liebherr is the fact that you can come in. I mean, gear cutting is a high precision and it's also a critical point. I mean, if you look at all the industries that you're involved, you're in a lot of drivetrains, a lot of transmissions, a lot of things yep. that put people's lives on the line. So it makes sense that you would want to get in to the metrology market so you could control the entire process from start to finish. So you could guarantee the lives of the people out there that are relying on all of these components. So you started five years ago in metrology there had to be a reason that you started besides just bringing it under the house what problems were you finding in the industry using other measurement services and because there's a reason you started your own division yeah well in, in general we wanted to be a complete provider of gear solutions yes and besides the manufacturing aspect this also included now the inspection uh, process so there are a lot of competitors out there in the market uh, and then you asked earlier what does distinguish ourselves from yeah. the competitors. Everybody can tell you that they measure quality class, etc, etc. There we're all the same. But I think what uh, stands out for us is that you have a complete team behind you. You have the application experience, you have the manufacturing experience, now we have the inspection experience. We're in the market for a long time and we listen to our customers and we're trying to incorporate features that they need, especially in today's EV world. We have, as one example I would like to mention is uh, chamfer inspection. Okay. Uh, it's on the screen behind me. Uh, it's a critical aspect that engineers put onto their drawings and the manufacturing guys have an issue to properly inspect it. So Lipe has uh, integrated this feature into their standard program it doesn't require any extra time, literally other than to say, click, yes, I want to inspect it. So really? especially for EV applications, this is a very, very important feature that distinguishes ourselves from our competitors. Well, I, I've got to share a confession with you and with the millions that are watching yeah. out there. I was a machinist for over 12 years when I started in the industry. You know how I inspected my chamfers? Uh, with a caliper. I, you, I didn't, didn't really. I, oh, held didn't. Up a, I held up a pocket scale and I was like, ah, good enough. Okay. Because right. I knew the, the inspectors I was working with until, because in, none of them had your system. Yep. Uh, this system came out after I left machining. Yep. They had no way to inspect their chamfers. And this is a benefit for everybody. Uh, we just had a customer here early on the week from yeah. a big automotive company. And he says, well, this is really something I'm interested in. So this is the reason why we are at the IMTS, to show our latest technology and trying to generate business for Lipia. That is beautiful. So I love the fact that you can inspect all of the gears, obviously. Yes. The chamfers, that really sets you apart as well. And the fact that you have it all under one roof. So the people out there, if they're making gears, maybe they're outsourcing them right now. A lot of us are trying to bring the work back under our roofs. Yeah. The conversation with Liebherr makes the most sense. So if they want to get a hold of Liebherr, where's the best place for them to go? Uh, you can go to our website, you know, Liebherr.com. Uh, I would like to think that most people in the gear business, they have our contact information. So Leap is a well-known name, but yes. yeah, feel free to contact anybody else, info at uh, leaper.com or go to our website and we'll help you out. Awesome, so you can click the link in the post or you can click, if we're on LinkedIn, you can click the talk with some of these people and get connected with them. Thank you so much. I All love right. everything you're doing here. Thanks, Alta. Appreciate it.